leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting heart. Amen. Let us sing one more song, and then uh, we'll hear our speaker for this morning, Brother Craig Well. That will be, um, Oh, I Want to See Him. Let's just do two verses of Oh, I Want to See Him. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, you know we're pointing souls to Calvary. Through the crimson flow, yeah, many arrows pierced my soul from without, within. But my Lord leads me on through, and I must win. Oh, I want to see Him look upon His face. prayers, and for that we are so ever grateful. Um, what can we say but all praises to God, amen? amen? For him allowing us to come together on such a beautiful day like today and to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, we just like to acknowledge all the brethren who uh, work uh, together to, to make this happen, and it's only by the grace of God that we can do the things that we have able to do. And for that, again, we're so ever grateful. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to ask if you would turn your Bible to the book of uh, 1 John. Again, that is uh, 1 John, and uh, we'll be focusing on uh, chapter 1 of 1 John. 1 John, beginning at chapter 1, beginning at verse 1 again. Uh, but before we do so, let us go to our Heavenly Father and a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father, once again, we come before your throne of grace and mercy. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us with the breath of life, for giving us this beautiful day in which we have been able to come out to worship you and spare it in truth. Uh, you've covered us with your 
glorious umbrella, the, the sky, and you've allowed us to stand on solid ground and Father, to go about and to bring you all the glory in which you so rightly and richly deserve. We certainly thank you, Lord, for your Son, our Lord and Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Uh, we thank you for his example. We thank you for his love and how he has forgiven us, Father. And by his blood, Father, by his blood, we are able to receive it, believe it, and accept it that we to it, we are faithful until the end, we'll have eternal life. And while we walk on this earth, Father, we are so grateful for the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our guide, our, our teacher, our inspiration, who continues to, to allow us to be all that we can be as you called us into that marvelous, marvelous life. And we thank you, Father, for our brethren, for our family, for our loved ones. We have so much to be grateful for. So, Father, let this service be a, a sweet-smelling aroma unto you. And as always, as we give you all the glory that you so richly and rightly preserve, all those who we say, amen. 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 So we, we find ourselves again in the book of 1 John, the chapter is 1, one and I'm going to uh, read as I did last week, uh, verses 1 through 10. 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 through 10, and I take my reading from uh, the New American Standard. There we will find what was from the beginning, what we have heard and what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested and have seen and testified and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father. It was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. Verse 5. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. And if we say we have fellowship with him and yet walk, in the darkness we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus. His son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. This morning I'd like to bring you part two of the message Walking in the light. Walking in the light. Now, for those who may be joining us for the first time uh, this morning on this beautiful day which God has made, I, I would like just to give you a brief overview of last week's sermon. As it was mentioned that the author of this letter was the Apostle John. One of the reasons for writing this letter was for the reading believers to also share in the joy that comes in having a close and wonderful relationship with Jesus Christ. Also that the term walking is also a metaphor for the word of living. And so when you hear walking in Christ, living in Christ, Verses 5 through 7, a few points were revealed and highlighted as we 
began to begin this process last week. We saw that in verse 5. We learned of the announcement, that is the message that was coming forth. And in verse 6, which we will look at today, we learn of the admonishment. And in verse 7, by the grace of God, next week we shall learn of or look into the atonement. And so we have three things. We have the announcement. Secondly, we have the admonishment. And thirdly, we have the atonement. Now, that being said, that the announcement being the message of the word of God. The admonishment is the warning to the people. And lastly, the atonement, which is the work of God. And so, in order for a person to be in fellowship with God, there can be no hiding of sin. Light and darkness cannot exist in someone's life at the same time. Just as when light is turned on in a room, darkness no longer exists. If a person is walking, living in the dark, he or she is no longer having fellowship with God. Whereas light is synonymous with goodness and truth, darkness is synonymous with evil, falsehood, and lies. Some will claim to be in fellowship with God while living unfaithful and sinful lives. They are living double lives, being double-minded, trying to serve two masters at one time, being evil and pretending to be good, living in darkness yet acting as if they have the light, obeying Satan and ignoring or avoiding God. They are lost, have drifted away from the righteousness path of God's light. They are in desperate need of being helped and rescued by faithful and fearless brethren who truly love and care for their souls. They need to repent before God and they need to be redeemed by Jesus and reformed by the Holy Spirit. For darkness is opposed to truth because darkness does not know the truth and cannot hold the truth. Anybody who loves the dark more than they love the light need their head and their heart examined. Jesus said, walk, live while you have the light. Least darkness comes upon you, for that he that walked in darkness know not where he goes. Darkness usually refers to a sinful path, the spirituality of being blind. They can't see the truth, even if the truth was standing in front of them. And it's easy to see that we live in a spiritual dark planet. Ever since Satan successfully tempted man into disobeying God, his orders and his instruction, that light that comes with God's instruction, then man became a fallen being. And as a result, mankind from that point on was introduced to death and spiritual darkness. And it is for this reason. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, and against world forces and influences, against the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. People who are overtaken, consumed with sinful ways, they stay away from the light, from God, from the gathering of the saints, because their sin will be exposed. But Jesus said in John 3 and verse 19 that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light for their deeds were evil. 
nevertheless, what's done in the dark will certainly be exposed in the light. The Bible tells us that Jesus was the light. And the light was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness can never extinguish it or understand or comprehend the light. Darkness, beloved, is associated with ignorance, with a lack of wisdom. Solomon said in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 13, he said, wisdom is better than foolishness, just as light is better than darkness. Thus only the foolish are comfortable and playing with fire and messing around with sin in Satan's playground of temptation. In the sinful path of those who walk that dark path, they are on the crooked path. They are on the evil path, the perverse path, the unrighteous path, the path that leads away from God and not brings one close to God. No Christian, no Christian with a good heart and a right mind. That is to say, no child of God lives and stays in darkness. Amen. For if they do, in 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, the Bible tells us that the one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. The only way we can be made out to be liars is to dwell in the darkness and say that we have light. Dearly beloved, don't allow yourselves to say or to stay in the fire of sin. For sin will lead you into the pits of hell and turn you into a pile of ashes. Walking in darkness puts you into the internal dark where weeping and gnashing of teeth of the lost and the miserable souls end up. Which is our warning today to stay away at all costs from darkness from dark places and dark influences. Paul said in Ephesians 5 and verse 11, as our reader read to us today, he said, do not participate. Look at what he says. He said, do not participate. He said, don't look at it. Don't play with it. Don't get next to it. Don't entertain it. He says, do not participate. In the unfruitful deeds of darkness. But instead, if you're going to be near darkness, expose the darkness. Amen. Jesus also encouraged us. said, I am the light. And whoever follows me will never walk or live in darkness. But will indeed have the life of light. No one I know. No one I know likes to walk around in darkness. And even if they are familiar with a room in their house, unless they're ready to go to bed, usually they'll turn on the light. But when we walk around in darkness, we are more likely to stumble over things, to even trip or even fall and hurt ourselves. There are nothing but risks involved when we walk in the dark, whereas there can be nothing but rewards when we walk in the light of God. Our lives will be blessed. Beloved, you need to take heed, all of us need to take heed of all the warnings that are involved in living in the dark and in this text in verse 6. One of the dangers of walking and living in the dark is separation from God. Take heed to Paul's warning. In Romans 1 and verse 21, where he says, For even though they knew God, 
They did not honor him as God or give thanks to God. But they became futile in their speculations and, and in their foolishness. Their hearts were darkened. Foolish hearts dwell in sinful behavior. Speak ugly words. Ignore or become intolerant or tolerant of evilness. If we get too comfortable with the way the world going, we are slipping into darkness. Thus again, be warned. Be concerned. See if indeed you are staying in the faith. See, in fact, if you are in the light. Examine yourself. Don't have anybody examine. Examine yourself to see if indeed you are walking in the light. And be honest with yourself. For when walking or living in darkness, it is a sure sign, a symbol. You are in a miserable state. It's a warning sign of one's emptiness, of your own emptiness. There is no sign of God. There is, there is no response to his promises. His message of hope and, and mercy and forgiveness and grace. There is no desire within you or inspiration to change for the transformation because you become blind to the revelation that is coming from heaven, from the word of God. That is directed and wants to lead you to eternal life. So pay attention to the warning signs of life, to the warnings of the Bible, the scriptures, and pay attention to the dangers and the consequences The dangers, listen, let me wind this down. The dangers of walking in darkness are as follows, in no specific order. First of all, when you walk in darkness, you're beginning to have a closed mind, a hard heart to God's light, to his word. And every time the word hits you, you start to rebel against it. Whenever the truth is before you, you start to deny it. You don't want to hear God's message. Secondly, becoming comfortable in darkness. You live out that darkness. It's easy for you to drown out God's voice through his word. And then substituted with the voice of the world. Where God has said no, the world says yes. Where God says love, the world teaches hate. Where God says bring the light, we bring darkness. We also don't want to change. And sadly enough, we don't know how to change, or where to go to help one, or who to go to. The final danger on that list as well is when you can't see the enemy, when you can't see the predator, Satan coming to destroy you, to rip you apart, to tear you down before you know it. There's no hope of rescue. That's the danger. Some of them. Then when we look at the consequences, when we dwell or walk in darkness, your life becomes out of control. And it comes apart because of bad influences. When the blind is leading the blind, they all end up in the pit. When regrets of life start to, to, to catch up to you and start to work on you, break you down and tear you apart. 
Those regrets are like a nightmare. Because in reflecting back, you knew to do better, but you did not do. You knew to come out of the darkness and come to the light, but you stayed in the darkness. And as a result, the shadows of darkness haunt you, haunt your mind, haunt your conscience and your spirit. The consequences of darkness is nothing to play around with. You no longer know the difference between right and wrong, good and evil. No longer can you separate the things of God and the things of the world. Everything becomes mixed together. Finally, as the word inscribed on a plaque said, I said to the man who stood at the gate of time, give me a light that I may walk safely into the darkness. And he said to me, when you go out into the darkness, put your hand into the hand of God. And God shall be to you brighter than any light known to man and safer than any other known way. Beloved, stay away out of the darkness as best as you can. But if you have to pass through it, walk with the Lord. Keep his fellowship and you will make it through. God bless you. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. If you are here today and you are not a Christian, if you are listening and been listening, it's your desire to, to, to get your life right. We at the Church of Christ in Roxbury are here to help you on this journey to get to heaven. We will study with you. We will pray with you. We will help you. For God does not want anyone to perish, but for all to be saved. And that's what we're here. We're all we are, humble servants of the Lord, to help someone with their journey and on the path of righteousness. The Bible clearly tells us that well, we must have faith in what we read in the scriptures. Not only do we have to have faith, we must believe and we, we must repent. We must turn away from all the wickedness, from the darkness, and turn to the light, to the truth, to where God is. And confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and, 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 and be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. Not a sprinkling, not a pouring, not oil, but a true baptism, an immersion in water, and come up a new creature in Christ. And may the joy be with you. Jesus is joy for the rest of your life. Let us all stand as we sing the song of invitation. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. So we're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching. Ching up with to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Brother Craigwell for that powerful message. Walking in the light, part two. You can't help but to look forward to part three on next week. We're just so thankful for all of those who are, of course, uh, listening online. Where we are. Streaming it online and just so thankful that you uh, decided to participate in that manner.
but also we're thankful that the Lord has blessed us to be here today, even here in person. We're going to hopefully persevere and have another blessing of a beautiful Sunday next week and do this again. And so at this time, we, of course, know that James 5, 16 says we should confess our trespasses to one another and pray for one another that we may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man is bell of much. And we just want to make sure everyone knows that you can go online and submit your prayer requests. And certainly we're going to ask you to continue to submit your prayer requests on Tuesday nights uh, and pray with us on Tuesdays and Wednesdays even uh, as we have Bible study. So let us offer one prayer. Most righteous and most kind, Father, we just come at this time. Thankful, Lord, for this lesson that we again have learned on how to better walk and to live in the way that you would like us to live. Let us, Lord, hear the words that if we say we do not have sin in us, we are a liar. Let us continue to meditate that we have growth, that each and every one of us, each and every one of us need to look within ourselves. As Brother Craig Will talked about, let us examine ourselves. We so often examine everyone else and not ourselves. Let us, Lord, be brothers and sisters who indeed take these words and to put them into action. For we know, particularly in these times, that folks are going to look at us and know and wonder what does it what is it like to live as a Christian? What is it like, particularly in these difficult times? Let us be a resource for others. Let us be able to sit down and study your word, and let us certainly continue to encourage others as we continue to see that you're still adding to this body, even in difficult times. And we're so thankful for those who have been added to the body, even in this week, not only here at Roxbury, but across this country. We are still brothers and sisters who are still teaching and still you are still adding to this body. And we're so thankful for that. So, Lord, at this time, we just ask that you continue to watch over us and watch over all the efforts that we have that in every way, from the radio program to the live streaming to the services, that we are still doing your will in everything that we do and that you get all the praise and all the glory. And it's a, at um, this moment, we decide that we again, at this time, decide that we're going to make sure, even through these difficult times, that we become stronger in your word, stronger as a body, and more united than ever. That this is the time we have chosen, that you point our eyes to say, focus on me and not on yourselves. Let us take that lesson throughout all of these difficulties. We just ask all of these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Will all of the brothers who are ready for communion collection please prepare yourselves? And then all the brothers and sisters, uh, we are handing out the uh, communion collection or the communion trays. So let us make sure that we have those as we prepare our brother sales. He at the cross. Christ will meet you there. He intercedes for you. Lift up your voice and leave with him you care and begin life anew. Why don't you kneel at the cross? Kneel at the cross, leave every care, leave every care, come on and kneel at the cross, kneel at the cross, Jesus will meet you there, meet you there. Good morning, church. Good morning. Come to that section of our worship uh, called communion, where we have an opportunity to uh, be reminded of the most incredible sacrifice ever made. Uh, and in preparation for this ceremony, we think about a lot of the things that uh, a lot of men and women who have led uh, amazing and 
inspiring philanthropic efforts here on earth and whether that's feeding the hungry or uh, housing the homeless, closing those who are in need or doing uh, prevention work. There's lots of things that lots of people have done uh, in our area and many other areas around the earth uh, where they're recognized in some really amazing ways, um, whether a building is named after them, a holiday is named after them, and all of these things, uh, these amazing and inspiring people have done have been recognized in uh, some large ways. And Christ, who lived a blameless life, a perfect life, only lived so we can have an opportunity to know God in an intimate setting. And the only thing that he asked was that he, we remember him through this very humble ceremony. We have an opportunity to recognize that his body was beaten, battered, broken, and his blood was shed all for us. And he, and he established this ceremony because he knows that us as very weak humans will easily forget how important this sacrifice was. So if you turn with me to the book of First Corinthians, in Paul's letter to the church in Corinth, he gave specific examples of how to participate in this ceremony. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse number 23, uh, it details how the ceremony goes, how they practiced it in the first century church, and how we practice it today. And it reads, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us at this time... Uh, as we start the ceremony, pray for the bread that represents the broken body of Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly and Righteous, Powerful God, we humbly come to your throne at this time with hearts full of thanksgiving and love for you, God, for allowing the opportunity for our lives to be saved, our souls to be saved, for us to have purpose and hope in the things that we have to do here on earth and uh, prayerfully to be with you in heaven one day. God, we thank you for the perfect sacrifice of your son, uh, the broken body. We know that the endurance of the pain that he uh, took on was all because of our sins and our shortcomings. And we're grateful that we have the opportunity to have a relationship with you because of that sacrifice that was made. We pray that as we take this emblem, that we do so in a way that uh, reflects the love and the grace and the mercy that you've shown us, and that we do so with a heart that's pure and a mind uh, of understanding. In the Son's name we pray, amen. amen. Continuing at verse number 25, it reads, in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So let's pray for the cup. To heavenly righteous, powerful God, we come again to your throne, uh, thanking you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us individually and collectively, God. We know that. Uh, we are people who are full of uh, forgetfulness and who uh, humbly created this ceremony so that we can remember uh, the sacrifice your son made. And we know that the blood represents uh, the, the power that covers those sins, covers all of our uh, shortcomings and uh, creates an opportunity for you to see us as blameless and perfect through your son, God. We thank you for that uh, blood that covers us, Lord. Father God, we pray that everything we say and everything we do as a church and as a body uh, reflects uh, 
the, the grace and the mercy that uh, you have shown us and that we do so in accordance to your will. We love you. We ask this prayer through your son's name. Amen. Amen. As we end uh, the communion, we'll proceed to the collection which is also another part of our worship service where we're reminded that God provides all, gives all, knows all. And there are many things that we think that we want to need that we may not even really want and need. And all of the things that we have uh, are, I was thinking this week, earlier this week, that Sometimes we realize that we're so blessed that we forget blessings. That's how blessed we are. We forget that we're blessed. There are many people who are without. There are many people who are in need. And God provides us everything that we need. Um, And it's a really humbling way to look at our lives. That sometimes we forget that God provides all and gives all. Everything that we need. He gives us and this is an opportunity. There's no way that we can give back to God in the ways that He gave to us, but this is an opportunity where uh, He allows us to show love to Him. And even in the blessings that we give to the church, they're given back to us. So that's the that's what uh leaders when leadership says, be faithful and liberal in your giving. It's not because uh of necessarily for the monetary reasons, but because we know that it blesses your life as well. And in the uh, First Corinthians chapter 16, it reads, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, so do you also. On the first day of the week, each one of you is to put aside and save as he may prosper, so that no collections be made when I come. And we are very blessed uh, to have uh, our, our members continue to give so the works of the church can continue. Uh, and we want to be a continue to be a shining light to this community. So please be faithful and liberal in your giving. And you can do so by going to Church of Christ in Roxbury.org and going to the e-giving, uh, to the e-giving section, and you can do the giving online. Let us give thanks for those that have given thus far and who will give uh, today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Righteous, powerful God, thank you again for everything that you bestowed upon us, Lord. We know that you take care of all things in our lives. You are the leader of our lives and you've provided for us thus far and you will continue to provide for us. Please, Lord, uh, allow our our members uh, to be faithful and to uh, continue to think about others while they're giving. And we thank you, Lord, so much for the members of this church who Continue the work that needs to be happening daily. Uh, Bless them in the ways that you know how, Lord. And for those who are the stewards of these monies, that you could bless them as well. We love you, God. We ask this prayer through your son's name. Amen. Amen. We have now come to the close of our services, but before our benediction, we just want to uh, acknowledge all the visitors who are both here and online and we're certainly encouraged by you visiting with us today and we certainly are thankful for all of those who um, are visiting even online. One of the things that um, in my prayer I was talking about um, just how we've grown through this but we've grown through our media ministry. I can tell you the media ministry right before COVID and we could no longer meet had a presentation just to talk about how the new website was coming together. And it had such benefit to now, what we're able to now, just think of the growth that we had as a church, that now instead of us just saying, man, you should have heard the sermon on Sunday, we can now say we need seven folks online. And so we want to continue to encourage folks to send folks online to hear the sermon and to be a part of worship, even when it's not happening at that moment. 
And we certainly want to still encourage everyone to come and see on or listen on Sunday nights at 8.30 at WEZE 1090 uh, to listen to the sermon there as well. Because in all of these ways, we are continuing to outreach and do really what it is God has called us to do, and that is to evangelize for the world. And so even in COVID, we have gotten stronger as a congregation, particularly with our media ministry. And we should be again to um, Darius's prayer. These are the things that we have taken for granted and we forget about that he's blessed us with. And so let us encourage folks even on this evening to come up, to come in here. And then of course, send them to the website as well. And we're thankful for all of those who are visiting. We're gonna just ask now Brother Creech will come and lead us in benediction and we will be um, closing services at that point. We made it back here, even some that are not here, and that are going online and praising with us, Lord. We're grateful for the blessings that you have sent all of us, and we ask that you deliver us back here in this week, and let us not walk in darkness, but walk in the light, and reflect the Church of Christ always. Remember who we are, even in the trying times that we are in. May you keep us in great health, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally in this time for the those that lost loved ones in this crisis, may they continue on having strength to lean towards you and not towards this world. Until we gather again, thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I said 1090. That's W-I-O-D or something, right? 590. I apologize. 590. W-E-Z-E. Apologize. Thank you so much. So listen in tonight, 830. 590. I very much appreciate it. Thank you.